I like to start off by saying thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to live another day, for allowing me to continue life. This is a little bit difficult and a little bit hard for me, but I'm a stronger person now than I have ever been before. Today marks the anniversary of a brutal stabbing that left me for dead on October 24th, 2014. Before I can continue, I would have to put a disclaimer out, making sure this not, may not be suitable for young children or for the squeamish or for anyone that's terrified of blood. So I just wanted to put that out there first. I'm able to talk about this because the healing has started, but the healing began. And hopefully this part of my life can help others if they're going through any type of domestic violence or any type of abusive relationships. Hopefully these red flags or things that I'm about to say that I have never, ever revealed or ever said before until now. So this is a first coming from my mouth, from me, that you have heard it first. So with that, I begin. I've had friends that told me, girl, get out of it, get away, move on. That person should not be in your life. And we're looking out for you. And I've had some strong friends in my life that love me unconditionally through thick and thin. And the ones that know about this person, which I will not mention any names, Tina, my sister, Jason Wright, and Club Via, Jimmy Skinner, Jen Morales from Via. Lots of people from Kryptonite is where I met this person and after I was club. And the person moved in with me. And things were cool, got crazy. And living in situations, living arrangements wasn't what I wanted. Things I wanted to stay clean, sober, and it's time for me to grow up and move on. Other people don't want it to move on. On a horrific night, actually morning, that will forever change my life. And I would like to say right now to my roommate at the time, Glenn Moranis, everyone knows as Icy Hot, should have never witnessed or walk in or see what I'm about to describe. No one should ever have to go through that. And people in my life always ask, where's Icy Hot? Where is she now? Where's your roommate? Where's your best friend? After that incident, I can't hold her against it or anything like that. We parted a ways. It was too much for her. And too much for anybody to uh, comprehend or even believe. It was around 3 a.m., 4 a.m., got back from the club. I took a sleeping pill, because I normally can't sleep. I had sleep deprivations and things like that, and I had an argument the day before, or a couple of days before with him, this individual. I did allow him back in the apartment. Red flags all over the place. I said, we'll talk about this in the morning. Right now, I have to get ready for work. I gotta go to sleep. You do what you gonna do, you do you. 
And of course, I didn't feel threatened from the person because there was never really like any physical altercation, anything remotely, you know, that was going to scare me. So he did his little whatever he does, I'm going to the club, hanging out, you know, coming in late. That's cool. I have to go to work. I went to bed around 3.30. I heard some wrestling in my apartment and I always keep a nightlight on, always. And I didn't think anything of it because now I'm in and out of sleep. And I just remember him taking a shower. And but then later on, now I'm like thinking it's a dream or whatever. All lights are off. It's pitch black, it's dark. You know when you feel somebody or feel something above you or feel somebody right next to you if you have a gut feeling go for it don't hesitate i felt something but i didn't react i didn't do anything i woke up with a knife it's like a longer than a honey knife twice the size of a ruler Slashed inside my neck, which is uh, my carotid artery, right here. I just remember hearing something, and he said, <gasps> ah, like that, and that's when I just remember a knife, me grabbing it, touching it, holding it, and I kept on hollering out. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what's going on? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That's all I remember saying. And in that flash of a second, all I could think about was I gotta live. I don't know what this is. My mind is racing because you feel no pain in those first couple of seconds, none whatsoever. All you have is adrenaline going in your body. I'm fighting for my life. I escaped the bed, and the bedroom is where it happened when in my sleep, the knife went in my neck. I remember crawling on the floor in the long hallway, so if y'all remember where I lived at the Oxford apartment complex, crawling along the floor. He takes the knife out, stabs me in the back of my head. Blood is all over the place. I'm not thinking of anything else but my life. I pull myself to the door. I just remember, slippery, I couldn't open up the door. But I mustered up enough in, uh, strength, open up the door, pull myself across the hallway was my neighbor, Bob. He's a FedEx driver. If that gentleman and that man was not there, I would have bled out. I know I wouldn't have survived. I already know that. I owe him my life. He's a guardian angel. I'm banging at the bottom of the door. Help me. Help me. He opens up the door. We're both in blood. I just remember him behind me, the gentleman that was still stabbing me. He tried to stab me again. I grabbed the knife with my hand, the blade, and I pulled it. I just remember pulling that knife. I threw it inside the apartment complex, all inside of Bob's apartment. All I can remember is looking up at him, and that was it. And I guess when I saw him, I prayed for hope, prayed for someone to save my life. And I screamed, he's trying to kill me, he's trying to kill me. Please help me. And. It was on Channel 11, Channel 2 News, and people thought I was dead, but I'm alive. I'm alive today to tell this testimony. Please see red flags. Do not hesitate. Act on it. I'm glad to be alive today. Thank you for listening.